and welcome back to another Macrons Motors YouTube video and today we are doing a six month ownership review of my 2010 BMW C20D estate. Let's see the good, the bad and the ugly of the E91 3 Series. Because this is the Turing version of the 3 Series I think it is best that we start at this end with the boot. This has been a very useful boot over the six months. We have managed to carry lots of holiday luggage, suitcases, electrical appliances, all sorts, and this integrated load cover works really well. And we also have an integrated dog guard that clips into these hooks here. This is a useful feature. The second strong point of this 320D model is the 2 litre turbo diesel engine. We have, this provides 181 brake horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque. This is more than enough and can provide not to 6 to sprint times in under 8 seconds, which is very impressive for a car of this size and weight. And also returns excellent fuel consumption, averaging between 40 and 50 miles to the gallon combined. This is again with passengers and luggage. One thing that drew me instantly to the 91 320D specifically is that the running costs are surprisingly low for a car of this size, price and age. The road tax is only £130 a year, which for a 2 litre turbo diesel is very reasonable thanks to its low emissions and returning fuel consumption of upwards of 40 miles to the gallon, you really can't complain about. So if you're looking for a nice car to run on a shoestring student budget, I think the 320D is definitely worth a look. However, even if it is cheap to tax, insure and fuel, it isn't so cheap to service and repair. Routine servicing isn't cheap either, as this engine needs premium oil for it to run efficiently and smoothly, and it needs genuine BMW oil filters in order to retain its longevity. After all, this is a very sophisticated piece of machinery and cheapening out of maintenance for the short term will have a detrimental effect long term. Another disadvantage about this 320D is the idle sound. It's quite loud and it's not the most refined sound in the world. It sounds a little bit like a tractor. I have changed a few things on this SE Business Edition model. First of all, the chrome grills were changed to these double slatted gloss black grills, which I think look really mean. And we are now running on winter tyres for the season. So these are BMW alloys off of a lower spec 3 Series, which have been repainted. And we have Continental winter tyres, which are performing fantastically in the cold, wet conditions. Just over two months into ownership, the crankshaft pulley decided it would disconnect and take out the belt with it. Now this might not sound a huge issue in itself, and due to the design of the one belt running the alternator, air conditioning and water pump, I lost all of those auxiliaries in one action. This meant having to hobble home five miles with no water pump. This isn't ideal, and the repair cost me £260, including labour and VAT, to repair. Another issue that has cropped up along my 320D journey is that my screen wash tank has become blocked. This is not a huge issue in itself, as it is just 11 years worth of sediment that is collected at the bottom, but because it's a BMW, the screen wash tank is behind this wheel arch liner, which involves taking the wheel and the liner off to replace or unblock. This is an issue that I'm working on at the moment to rectify before the real winter crops in. The reason I fell in love with this particular car is the optional extra Dakota beige leather interior, which I think looks fantastic and is very comfortable. We have beige leather upholstery, beige leather door cards, beige B pillars, beige headlining, beige carpets, beige armrest, and 
stage dashboard inserts. One thing I don't like about BMWs is that it beeps at you for absolutely everything. Another interior aspect of the E90 Generation 3 Series that I like are these air conditioning climate control controls. You have dual zone climate control and it's very large, easy to use controls that are well illustrated. The iDrive system is very easy to understand and use. All the buttons are large and clear. We can control our navigation through this. It's very easy to move about. We have our radios programmed through here. CD and auxiliary input and our options as well. There is also the option to switch off the control display. I use this when I'm driving at night so that it doesn't blind me. One aspect about this E91 that I don't like are these pop-out cup holders. I find them very shallow and only small cups fit and even still it tends to want to fly out when you're driving. What would be more useful is instead of an ashtray to have this area as cup holders. This is what BMW have done on the later 3 Series models but it is still annoyance and it is quite an arm stretch away from the driver if you are a T-Rex like myself. Another slightly disappointing aspect about the E91 is the door pockets aren't very big at all and there is nothing in the way of cup holders in the middle. However, we do have a centre armrest in which you can store a mobile phone and business cards, small items. Now that we've had a wee yap about some of the interior aspects and maintenance aspects of the 320D, I think we should take it out on the road and see what the BMW is like to drive. After all, this is the ultimate driving machine, is it? Let's find out. The electric power steering is really easy to manoeuvre around and has a fairly decent turning circle. Now, this 2 litre turbo diesel power plant is very torquey and delivers its power smoothly and without delay. This makes making progress along very easy and effortless and you never have to floor it at all. Squint, gently squeeze the accelerator and off you go. I've had this BMW for six months now and have covered just over 4,000 miles in that time. A mixture of business miles, visiting customers, visiting friends and family, helping people move house, going on family day trips. We've done a lot in this car. My time with it suddenly isn't over yet. One issue that I'm trying to tackle is the BMW stereotype. The outside lane at 95 miles an hour, Bluetooth earpiece sitting behind the car in front, two inches behind, not indicating, giving light of way, etc. And not everyone is like that. Once we're underway, the turbo diesel engine is actually very quiet and refined. You don't hear it unless your foot is all the way down to the floor, which isn't often at all. The brakes, big disc brakes all round, are very sharp and responsive. It helps that they've just been renewed as well. The manual gearbox is an absolute delight to use, it's very quick and easy to move about, even if the clutch travel is quite long. So there we are, that's what it's been like owning this 2010 BMW 3 Series for 6 months now. This car is staying on the Macklin's fleet for as long as possible, so long as it continues to provide economical, fast and fun,
daily transport for the whole family and all their luggage. If you've enjoyed this ownership review, please remember to like, comment and subscribe for more content coming soon. See you next time.